Welcome into the KSO Show. I am Mason Voth. That is Drew Galloway. We are here on Tuesday, January 25th, and uh, it's the start of a special week for those that are really into college football and everything else because we are getting more nuggets of information dropped by EA Sports on what's going to go on with their uh, 2025 college football game. And today, uh, the first you know big kind of drop was the top toughest places to play. They gave a, a top 25 on the toughest places to play in college football. Now, if you're sitting here and you're thinking to yourself, oh, okay, man, the, there's a lot of teams in college football. There's a lot of unique atmospheres. Uh, really, some there's a good majority of fan bases that are riled up. They really support their team. You don't want to go play there on a Saturday. So I'm sure we're going to get a pretty good smattering of every conference in the country. Uh, it can't be that hard. There's only four conferences that matter now in college football. Uh, well, you'd be wrong because we were once again reminded that there's really only two conferences that matter in college football, and that's the SEC and the Big Ten because of the top ten, uh, only one was a non-SEC or Big Ten school, and that was Florida State, who may not be uh, a have-not in the ACC much longer, depending on how legal proceedings and everything else goes with them. So you see that, you're like, okay, whatever. Not the most shocking thing. And honestly, I'm not even going to dispute the ones in their top 10. Like, I don't have a huge problem with any of them. Uh, Kyle Field at Texas A&M is widely regarded as one of the toughest. They pack a bunch of people in there. Plus, they're a bunch of freaking weirdos. So, you know, the only thing that's scarier than a bunch of loud people is a bunch of weird loud people. You don't know what they're going to do. Uh, so I'm not gonna I'm not gonna fight you on that one. Obviously, Bryant Denny Stadium, yeah, that's what it makes sense. Uh, LSU, we know. I'm I'm surprised that they didn't make LSU number one. I mean, that just seems like everybody's top pick. Um, Ohio Stadium's on there. Dy probably is like, oh, they should have been number one. Uh, Georgia is on as well. Penn State, Wisconsin, Oklahoma, Florida State, Florida, round things out. I don't know. I mean. We'll see. So, so much of this is subjective, too, about what's gone on in recent memory. Like, I don't think Florida has been a scary opponent for anybody in recent years, even at home, unless maybe you're like Tennessee or something. Uh, and then Oklahoma, I don't know. I don't K-State certainly wasn't very scared nope. of that place in the light show. Maybe that's why it's so scary. It's you saying, don't know if the lights are going to stay on. So to say Oklahoma is the one that it's like, huh, uh, that's. That just doesn't seem like a tough place to play when K State's won there four out of the last six times. That I think that I I have a little bit of beef with Kyle Field being number one, but not enough to like stand and like make a big argument. Like I, I feel like LSU should probably be number one. My hotter take though is that Alabama should probably be near the bottom of the top ten because everybody that goes there says that the atmosphere is not great. They're just a lot better than everybody else. So well, the fans just expect to win and they're kind of wine and cheesy. And that's kind of the thing with the rest of this list. Like Texas makes it. And I think a lot of people would tell you that it's not like it's the most uh, overwhelming, tough place to play. It's just, you know, sometimes Texas is better than you. I think that's part of this uh, where like you, the toughest places to play are not the best teams necessarily. Uh, it's not the best traditions necessarily, which we will get into with all of this, because there are some on here that it's solely because they do something cool with their their music beforehand uh, and people lose their mind. Um, I would I would agree with with what you're saying there, but I, I do think Alabama like it's tough. The reason I give some some air to Kyle Field being number one, think of, you know, since they've been in the SEC how many times we've seen like a good Alabama team, like, you know, top three in the country go there and lose. Um, it's happened a couple times that they stay competitive with most teams that show up there. So I'm totally, I'm totally okay with Kyle field. I won't bad mouth that one. There are plenty of others that I could get into. Now the only big 12 school that made this list was Utah and they come in at number 18. Uh, so that's already the start of this. You're going, okay. Only one big 12 school. They're 18th. And then you look at some of the other ones that are around them. You know, Michigan State, Arkansas, Boise State ran out the top 25. And you're like, really? You don't think that it's tougher to go to Manhattan, Kansas, or Stillwater, Oklahoma uh, than one of those? So really just kind of altogether a uh, 
a fascinating list that was put out by EA Sports, and I'm sure some people uh, won't you know, love it. And I'll tell you this, my, the ones that I dislike the most uh, that are included in this list, uh, Lane Stadium and Virginia Tech, I get it. Some of yep. you just are like, hey, they play a 40-year-old Metallica song when they, the team comes out and they flash their lights. Like, that's awesome. I don't know that Virginia Tech has been relevant in college football in the last 10 years in terms of anybody being scared to go play there. Just don't think that's something that has happened. Uh, you know, Michigan State, whatever. You're telling me Michigan State is one of the toughest places to play right now? I don't think so. Arkansas, <laughs> no, don't believe that. Boise State, I guess if you're colorblind and you got to deal with the blue turf or whatever your problem might be, but I, yeah, that's, that seems like one that it's just like the mystique of the blue turf is 15, 20 years in the past, but EA can't give it up. And then uh, maybe the worst of all is Davis Wade stadium where Mississippi state plays. Yeah. The Cowboys are annoying. The Cowboys are annoying as hell, but I don't think they're anything more than just annoying. It's kind of like the paddles at Oklahoma state, like the paddles at Oklahoma state are just kind of annoying. But the paddles at Oklahoma State, I think, have probably more of an effect on the players than even the cowbells at Mississippi State because those cowbells are all the way all over the place throughout the stadium. The paddles, they're doing it like right behind your back if you're on the sideline in Stillwater. Uh, so just some idiocy in these uh, in these rankings. Yeah, you hit almost all the ones that I have issues with right on the head. Like nobody has ever in the last – I'll, you said 10 years. I'll even say 15 years has been like, oh, man, we have to go to Virginia Tech. That's that's going to be a tough one. Like one of the toughest, one of the top 20 toughest place to play in the country. And then Michigan State, Michigan State, I'm fine with because like you said, like when they're good, Michigan State can be a pretty tough place to play. But right now, I don't think that that's like some like road trip that you're like, ooh, this is a tough one. Like we got to bring our A game. And then Arkansas, Boise, and Mississippi State. Arkansas and Mississippi State, I feel like, just are getting the SEC pad. I mean, we talked before we started recording. I said, you can't tell me that 75% of the SEC makes up the top 25 places to play in the country. It, because I, I would argue, if you're going to add another SEC school, like Missouri should probably be on here before Arkansas and Mississippi State. But, like, I don't really understand those. And then I said that I don't think that Boise State is even the toughest place to play in the group of five. So I kind of have some issue with that. Uh, the other one on here that you didn't mention that I'm kind of shaking my head about is South Carolina being in the top 15. Again, is like, cool, they do the sandstorm during kickoff, whatever. It can get cool or whatever. But nobody outside of one year when Georgia lost at South Carolina is like super intimidated by going to South Carolina. And I think that some of these schools are just getting the SEC bump because you can't tell me that South Carolina, Virginia Tech, Michigan State, Arkansas, Boise, and Mississippi State are more intimidating or like why are they on this list but like Oklahoma State and K-State aren't? Because you can't tell me that somebody is like, ooh, Arkansas for sure has to be higher than going to Stillwater Oklahoma State's lost two home games the last three years. Arkansas won like three games total last season. So I, I, I just I don't really get it. Yeah, I, I think you can look around and you can also see on there, like you're saying, like some of these teams are just good too. Um and, or yeah. historically have been good. And and so you throw them on there. Um, like Notre Dame is one of those. I don't know that I've really ever heard of, you know, Notre Dame being this crazy place to play unless you think you know, touchdown Jesus is, is pulling some strings for him there. Um, so I, I don't know. I mean, look, I mean, it's not like we've been to a ton of these, but in terms of perception and also just, like I said, to start this, it's kind of tough to comprehend that. Oh, okay. So only the sec and big 10 have tough places to play. I get that those have stadiums that can, that fit more people. And so they get the, it theoretically will get louder in there at times, but it also somewhat has to do with what you're accustomed to and what you're used to. And uh, it has to be a relative conversation when you're talking about tough places to play. And I, I think that they probably missed the mark a little bit on this one. Like, I think, 
I think you're right about, you know, throwing, you know, Missouri out there right now as one that could be uh, a tough place to go to. Uh, so I don't know. We'll, we'll see uh, how people react to the, the rest of the list that come out uh, in the coming days, because tomorrow we are going to get to see uh, a little bit more uh, of like the, the game, I guess, but then ending the week, we're going to see the top offenses and defense and then the overall rankings, which are certainly going to have people uh, fired up. No doubt about it. But, in terms of the Big 12, we've already talked about it. Utah did make the list that EA put out. Nobody else in the league did. If you had to rank your five toughest places in the Big 12 in order, which would they be? Ooh, so in order, I think I think I would just – I kind of set out a principle before, but I think it's more of like a I've been here, I know what it's like. I think that I'd have – Boone Pickens, number one, at Oklahoma State. Then probably Utah, two. K-State at three. Probably Iowa State at four. And then that five spot is, I think, where you can really kind of debate with a lot of people on, like, where you think. But I think that if you go on when they are good, I think West Virginia probably rounds out the top five because the West Virginia fans can get pretty crazy. And again, what 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 is worse than a, a drunk, loud, crazy person? Not a lot. So I think West Virginia at their peak, probably number five. Yeah, I would I you know I would think West Virginia is in the conversation there. Uh, I've only ever been there when they weren't good, so I, I don't have the full scope of that. Uh, the the one that I think has forever been like the one that's talked about in the most overrated is Texas Tech. Uh, I've been to Lubbock a handful of times now for games and night games at that. And I just, I haven't been overly impressed. Uh, like it's just kind of, it's a crappy road trip. If that's what you think it's going to get to a team, but I don't know that the, the crowd has been overwhelming in any way. Um, I'm, I'm most, too. yeah, I'm mostly in agreement with you. Uh, I, I think Utah is probably number one. I think obviously we know, as annoying as they are, uh, their fans are are rowdy and very much into it. That's a part of it, and they they've been a good team. So you combine that with the fact that also they have a little bit of the the natural advantage because they are playing at a higher elevation. I do think that there is a lot that plays into it. So I, I'm okay with Utah being uh, if w- only one Big Twelve team had to make it. I'm okay with it being Utah. Behind that, I would probably follow with. Uh, some combination of K-State and Oklahoma State. I think it's a toss-up. I mean, uh, Oklahoma State is tough to beat at home, but also they've you know they've lost to some real stinkers at home. Um, and I I've not ever been overly impressed with that stadium or the crowd. I mean, um, I think it's good, but it's not like I go and I'm like, oh, I'm blown away. This is I've never seen anything like this. It's like, yeah, no, I've I've seen and felt that before in Manhattan for games. Um, and I, I don't know. So I think K State and Oklahoma State are in the mix there. We know that they get loud. We know that you know there's there's a lot of passion, everything that goes with it. Iowa State is probably number four for me as well. I think I mean, you think about crazy and annoying and weird, <laughs> Iowa State fits that bill too. And uh they're certainly rambunctious and that can be a really tough place for teams to go. I think we I mean, I think we have the evidence there too that it's not easy for even top teams in the league to go to to Ames and get wins now. And that's a place that if you're going there for a road game, you're probably anticipating a loss. You don't think that you're going to get one uh, when you, when you go to Ames, that makes it difficult. The fifth spot is really tough because you know, I, I get West Virginia. I don't think I would put them on there. I've already, you know, kind of poo pooed Texas tech. Um, of the new schools coming in, like we know Arizona State is not one of them to consider. Uh, you know, Cincinnati, you know, probably not. It would probably be UCF in the mix. Um, and then the other one is do you want to talk about like crazy wild cards and, you know, what's going to happen? Uh, the TCU fans, it's a smaller stadium, but they are a squirrely bunch. Uh, found you know I've I've been there twice for games 2012 and 2022 I was in Fort Worth 
to see K State play there. And 2022 was, I mean, they were throwing stuff on the field uh, after halftime, and they were, you know, pretty nuts about that. And then, like, you had fans like turning around and like banging on the glass of the press box and pointing and yelling stuff at people. Uh, that, it's a pretty intense crowd down there. And I know one thing: I certainly don't like TCU fans at this point. Like, I'm, I, you know, I think less of them. So maybe that has something to do with it. Maybe they deserve a little bit of credit. Um, and then I don't know. I, it's going to be interesting to kind of get a feel for some of the others. But I guess in terms of maybe it's just the environment because we see teams go to TCU and, and get it done. I I think I'd probably would give the edge to. May, I mean, maybe can BYU be in it even if they're nice and giving out ice cream cool. to visitors? Um, I don't know if they, I don't know if they can be in it just because they're not. They good. have that. They have that crazy road right or home record at night, but I just don't think that they're like good enough as a team to be like some like crazy. Yeah, but some of this would have five. to be like if your if your fans can prop you up and like get you to play above your skis, like that should be like certainly okay. an element okay. is if you're just a good team, but the other stuff matters much more. Like, are the, you? Then I, you then, I, then I think that I would, I'd, I'd consider BYU, but I still think I'd go with West Virginia because I I'm a lot more afraid of going to West Virginia than BYU. No, no offense to the hmm. BYU people that are watching yeah. this. I don't know. I, that's, that's a tough one for me. I, I think I'd probably would go, uh, I'll probably say BYU just to be different. I think, there is a little bit of uh, a mystique and everything that goes on with it. Uh, but it, it's tough to come up with in the Big 12. The one thing that I'm certain of, though, is that the Big 12 did not deserve to be ex excluded down to just one team in this list from EA. Oh, I 100% agree with that. Like somebody, one of my friends actually just sent me this. Uh, I mean, we were just talking about the top list and Texas A&M is 24 and 20 at Kyle Field since joining the SEC. So, I, like, I, I, I don't know if I would have them at one. The Big 12 needs more than one. I have a fun question now that I just kind of thought of while we were talking about the right, toughest places to play. Who would be your number 16? Like, easiest place in the Big 12 to play? Yes. Mm, it's a good question. Uh, It's it's probably got to be either Houston or Baylor would be my thought because uh, Houston, I just I don't think you get a good crowd when you're in a big city in a pro type environment like that um, in terms of like the the passion for Houston football down there. Um, obviously, they play in their their own college stadium uh, and then Baylor like it's small. And I just wasn't really impressed when I went. It feels like a, it looks and feels like a soccer stadium there, minus the fact that the crowd does not operate like a soccer crowd would. Like if Baylor somehow made that feel like it was a soccer crowd and environment, then boom, there you have it. But the stadium just looks like a soccer stadium. It's not actually, doesn't actually feel like that. But I think it's probably one of those two because the other ones, like I, I can find reason to give pause to, and uh, I I could see being worried about. But Baylor and Houston are probably battling for that spot that I'm not overly concerned about. Because Baylor's one to me that you think about it in the past, it hasn't been because of the crowd. It's because they've been good. It is is how you know why you would fear going to Waco when Baylor's just a me mediocre team. Anybody can go in there and beat them. Uh, I would say my bottom three, probably Houston, Baylor, Arizona State, and probably Houston as my last on um, probably easiest place to play. I just, even when Houston was at their like peak, uh, those two seasons, I, I don't think that it was like a crazy raucous environment. I think that they were just good. So I, I think that that has a little bit to do with it. And then Baylor, like you, I've only been to McLean once, and it was uh, 2022. I wasn't overly impressed, and that was a pretty decent Baylor team, and a, like a game that really mattered for them to kind of to kind of get back in the race for the Big 12. And 
their crowd was pretty out of it from the start. Now some of that was well, that was the state play. That was the fake blackout sellout that was going on there. Yeah, where, yeah, they were. Yeah, they're supposed to have the blackout. Nobody was showing up, and then somebody stepped in and bought a bunch of tickets with a bunch of money, and then they're like, "Oh, it's a sellout," and did not feel or look like a sellout in there. No, and then Arizona State is just because they haven't been good in so long. I just can't imagine somebody in the next year and maybe even two being like, Oh, if we have to go to Tempe. That's That's going to be a tough one. Yeah, I would agree. And I just, I think it's going to be tough to, to fill up that building for them uh, until they get good again. And then we'll see, I think probably that, but again, that's one of those two where, how how passionate in that area is everybody for Arizona State football? Like, I I don't the people that are very much like into it on a day to day basis, they're the, they're there they exist, but I don't think they exist to the scale that other schools have. And then if you think about like K State and Oklahoma State and some of these other Iowa State, like it's not just the diehards that are into it, but also it is a casual experience that people are drawn to there. You know, like I, I don't envision that the people that don't follow Arizona State football on a daily basis are heavily motivated to go to Arizona State football games. No, I, I even know somebody that went to Arizona State that like uh, actively avoids Arizona State sports. So I mean, I think that kind of just tells you where they're at as kind of a whole because basketball and football, I don't think that it's like a super intimidating place to play. But I think that that's probably like a consensus bottom three if we asked a lot of people. Yeah, I would agree with that. All right, well, that'll do for us today. That's a little look at uh, what's going on there. And we will uh, be back throughout the rest of the week, have a little bit more on the Cats for you, and certainly focus a little bit more. We haven't talked basketball lately, so probably time to dive into that as we get closer to July starting. So for Drew Galloway, I'm Mason Vo. Thanks for watching the KSO Show.